Hey gamers, and welcome to a very special edition of the board meeting, where I am going to begin my series of showing my top 50 games of all time as of the beginning of 2021. I'm just going to run through 50 through 41 today and then release them every few days or when I get a chance between my work schedule. I don't want to bore you too much, so let's jump right into it at number 50. Number 50, Lords of Waterdeep. When I was doing my list, I was surprised that this game was still so high up. It is a very basic worker placement game where you will be trying to recruit adventurers to complete quest cards for you to gain the almighty victory point. It has a D&D theme slapped onto it, but to me it is basically just a themeless Euro style abstract game about collecting resources and using each turn as efficiently as possible. This is a game I would suggest as a great teaching game of worker placement. It might even make my Mount Rushmore of gateway games, but it still keeps me very entertained and interested each time I play. Number 49, Small World. Small World is one of the very first modern board games I ever bought when I first got into the board gaming hobby, and I still very much enjoy it, but it may have made the list partially on nostalgia. To put it simply, Small World is risk, but with fantasy creatures. You will be picking a fantasy creature to conquer lands with, and each fantasy creature has some kind of unique ability that goes along with it. But even more interesting is each creature will have a random special power attached to it for this game, giving Small World quite a bit of replayability, plus mixing in all of the extra expansions that I have never hurts. Number 48, King of Tokyo. I feel this game has an unfair advantage on my rankings, just because this is a game my son, my nephew, and I play very regularly because they enjoy it so much, thus making me enjoy it that much more. In King of Tokyo, you will pick a monster to play as, and then we will be chucking dice to do damage to try and destroy the other monsters, or you can even try winning by points. But come on, it's a monster battle game, so our games always end with one monster remaining who killed everyone else. Number 47, Schottentotten. Schottentotten is a two-player only filler game designed by the King of Light Games, Reiner Knizia. In Schottentotten, players match wits going head to head, playing cards on their side of the rocks, trying to lay the best hand of cards, almost like a poker hand. The artwork is great and worth a few laughs having some ridiculous looking Scottish guys in kilts. For it being such a simple game, it will give the player a lot of tough choices of where they want to play their cards and win. I'm a very big fan of games that don't have a lot of rules, but offer a nice depth of choices to make just like this game. Number 46, Conspiracy Abyss Universe. Conspiracy Abyss Universe is the fast filler version of the underwater theme game Abyss. This game offers almost as much as the big box version of this game, but in one-fourth of the time to play. The artwork is absolutely stunning, but I won't talk too much about this one just because I may be talking about the original game sometime here in the future. Number 45, Watergate. Watergate is another two-player only card game where one player will play as the Nixon ad administration trying to cover up their wrongdoings, while the other player plays as the Washington Post trying to expose Nixon. It is a very interesting tug-of-war style game, and the cards you play in the game are actually the real people that were involved in this real-life mess of a situation. One player will be trying to get people to the witness stand, while Nixon will be trying to have that witness hushed. It is a fun little game with a unique theme, which is always good in my books. Number 44, Archaeology The New Expedition. Archaeology is yet another small filler game, and I know there are a lot of small box games in this section of my top 50, but I do like my filler games. Archaeology uses an interesting press-your-luck set collection mechanic that I find very fun. You'll be collecting sets of artifacts, and you can turn them in on your own turn, or you can hope to find more of that artifact to increase the value. But the longer you hold on to your cards, the greater risk you may lose them by thieves and wayward sandstorms. Number 43, Arkham Horror The Card Game. Arkham Horror is a living card game set in the world created by H.P. Lovecraft, and players will be trying to team up to defeat the evils and horrors that come along with the Lovecraftian mythos and Elder God Cthulhu. 
I actually just find the game and mechanics to be just okay, but what I really love in this game is the story that it throws you into. I actually find myself getting very into the theme when I'm playing this game, whether there is some hellish ghoul chasing me down a corridor or I'm hunting down some cultists. This is just a card game, but it definitely feels like an actual big, sprawling board game. Number 42, Imhotep. Imhotep is an Egyptian-themed game where players are builders, and they can work on different things like the pyramid or building obelisks. There is a ton of interaction in this game, and the actions are very fast and snappy, so you don't wait too long for your turn to come around. And for it being such a fast game with simple choices, those choices may be simple, but they will make you think. You're going to have to choose sometimes to either try and help yourself or make sure other players don't get what they want. Number 41, Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders is a simultaneous card drafting game where players will be developing their city, erecting wonders, and waging war on their neighboring players. This is getting to be quite an old game now. I find it still coming to the table because of a few things. It plays just as fast with seven players as it does with four, and the simultaneous drafting means that there is basically no downtime in the game, so all players are always engaged. For that reason, this game won't be leaving my collection anytime soon. And that will be it for my 50 through 41. This section had quite a few smaller games, but in the coming list I'll be bringing some more big box complex games. Next time I'll be back with my 40 through 31 in a few days. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to the board meeting. I think that will adjourn this meeting though, so I hope everyone has a great day.